So this will be a basic uh, demonstration. So here's the filter. And what you see here is in the center you see the wave shaping curve. So you can turn it off our tangents fast or spline. And with the spline you can draw your own curve. So you can take a note. So in the second panel, you'll see Filter, Dynamics, and LFO. And let's play with some of the filters. So there are quite a few. Um, I would really recommend these Krog ones, and these here, and, and Resi is pretty cool. But there are many. So let's pick one of them. Let's pick the non-linear one. So typically, the non-linear ones will be more expensive, but they saturate nice. If you drive the gain on this, you can hear that it saturates quite nicely. Let's turn the dynamics off for now. Oh, it's going on. It's clipping it. So what you see here is the volume. Also see the volume. So here you see the input volume, here you see the output volume after the wave shaper and the filter. And so here you can zoom in with the scroll wheel and you see this line here which says threshold. And this threshold you can pull where you want it and it will affect the dynamics. So let's pull it. Accuracy of the peaks here you can set with RMS time. So if you set this higher, then you get it more of an average, which is better at detecting base e notes. If you set it low, it becomes very jumpy. You see that? If you have look ahead on, then um, it will compensate the delay caused by the RMS calculation. Okay, so let's look at the dynamics. So let's activate the filter dynamics. And now we can pull the threshold down to where the volume is. Move this down. And now you see that the yellow curve starts to go up and down. This is the dynamics that is being used. And if you hit the outer mouse button on these bars here, then you can set over what range the dynamics modulates the parameter. that it's responding to uh, the dynamical curve here. And you can set the attack and decay of this curve as you want. So did much. You get the idea. So then you also have an LFO, which also goes over this range, where you can set, for example, uh, different styles. Similarly, you can turn the wave shaper to activate and deactivate based on the same dynamical curve. If you do this, you can uh, simulate, for example, compressors. All right. Um, so there are different types of LFOs. For example, um, 
one single exponential. So this just does a single exponential, random exponentials. Let's put the threshold off so we don't confound the two. One thing that's also useful with the LFO is that you can trigger it to MIDI notes. So then the LFO resets on every note. So for example, if you have single exponential, then you really get an exponential per MIDI note. You get a more plucky sound. So there are many filters in this, um, they all sound different and they all have pros and cons and you can read a little bit about them in this box here. So there are many ways to, to use this. Thank you. 